Restaurateur's Journey with Menu Tiger. Hiya, my name's David, and I'm excited to welcome you to Menu Tiger. I'll be your tour guide in navigating our services as we journey together in growing your business. Upon logging in, you are met with the dashboard. This is where you'll see overall individual store analytics or overall sales analytics of all stores, which is useful in tracking and interpreting data that helps boost your business. The data that will be shown are analytics on your orders, revenue, and customers, which you can sort by week, month, or a customized period of time. You can easily download the data in SVG, PNG, or CSV format. Below the analytics board, you will see data on your most sold foods. On the top part of your dashboard, you will see the customer app URL that leads to your restaurant's customized website. Above that is where you'll find the preview icon. Clicking this gives you a peek of your digitized menu and the customizations you made for the website. Next, let's go to your profile settings. This is where your personal information and Menu Tiger account billing are shown. Stores. Next up, the Stores section. Under Stores, you can add your store details. Depending on your plan, we can accommodate more than one restaurant. So, if you want to digitize more, this is where you can add it. To add a store, click New. Under Create, fill in the name of the store branch, address, and phone number, then click Save when you're done. Once you've added your stores, you can then customize the QR codes, set up the number of tables, and add users. To do this, click Customize QR. Then, you'll see the options in editing your menu QR code. Upload your current restaurant's logo, select the data pattern and eye pattern that you prefer. Select the colors for the pattern, eye, and background. Make sure that the pattern and eye color is lighter than the background so that your QR code can be easily scanned. After that, select a frame for your QR code. Make sure to add a call to action phrase like, scan me, so your customers will know what to do. After you're done customizing your menu QR code, review your edits, then click Save. Next up is setting the number of tables. Start by clicking on the store. Then, add the number of tables by clicking on the plus sign. If you want to reduce the number of tables, just click on the minus sign. Click on the QR code icon for each table to preview the QR code. They may look the same, but each table has an assigned QR code that is unique from the other. Do a test scan for each QR code to make sure it's scannable and working correctly. To download the QR code for each table, just click on the download icon. Once you've downloaded the QR code for each table, you can then print it out. After printing it out, you can now place them in your restaurant. Make sure you place your printed menu QR code at a place where customers can easily scan it. You can place it on a table tent, post it flatly on each table, or put it on a cardstock. Now, onto the Users tab. This is where you'll be adding the users and admins for each store. An admin will have access to all sections except the website and add-on sections. A user will only have access to the orders section and will be able to facilitate the orders that come in. If you have more than one store, you can assign different admins and users for each of your stores. To add them, click on the store where you wish to add a user or admin. Then, click Add. Fill in the first and last names access level either or an admin or a user, and their email and password. Review the data you filled in, then click Add. 
Repeat this process if you wish to add more. Setting up your digital menu. Establishing a digital menu for restaurants starts with setting up your menu. This is done under the menu and website sections. So here's how you create your restaurant's digital menu with Menu Tiger. Once you see your dashboard, click on Menu. There, you'll see two options, foods and modifiers. Under foods is where you add your dishes and under modifiers is where you put the add-ons and side dishes for each category and food items. To get started on digitizing your menu, click foods. This is where you get creative in showcasing your menu. Click on the new button beside categories. Start filling in the boxes by choosing the store and writing down the name of the food category. We're gonna come back and add something under modifier groups later. For now, we're gonna continue and click add. You can add as many categories as you want. Now that we've created a food category, we're gonna add the food items under that category. Click on a category, then click on the new button beside food list. Fill in the store, name of the dish, then its description, price, size, and preparation time. If the food item is a featured dish, tick the box beside Featured. Availability is already ticked by default, but you can untick it if the dish becomes unavailable or will be off the menu for a bit. If the dish has food allergens, you can list it down under Ingredient Warnings. If the dish has add-ons, you can add it on Modifier Groups after you've made a modifier group for the add-ons. Adding modifier groups is discussed in the later part of the video. You can then add up up to three appetizing photos of your dish by dragging and dropping it on this box. You can add recommended items later after you've added all the dishes on your food list. After that, review the information you filled in. Then click add after you're done. Repeat the process until you've added all of your dishes. Now, let's proceed to modifiers. This function is for giving your customers some options on what they want to add with the dish that they're ordering. For example, a salads category would need a variety of meats and salad dressings for customers to choose from. To add those options, click on modifiers, then click on add, then fill in the name of the food modification. It can be a side dish, a modification on the order, or an add-on. Put in food modifications by clicking on add, fill in the name, price, and unit. You can click on the toggle button to enable or disable a modifier item. Once you're done, you can click the save button. Repeat until you've added all of your food modifications. So after you're done adding all of your modifiers, go back to foods and select a category that has modifiers. Click on the edit icon, then click on the drop down menu beside modifier groups to add the modifiers and click save after. Aside from modifiers for a category, you can also add a modifier that's specific to one dish. Just create the modifier group in the modifier tab. After creating the modifier group, go back to the dish and click the edit icon, then select the modifier under modifier groups. Make sure to click save after you're done to save the edits that you made. If you want to delete a dish, a category, or a modifier group, click the delete icon, then confirm by clicking yes, delete. You can also rearrange the order of your food categories. Just long press on the category, then drag and place it on where you want it to be. This is to adjust the order of how the categories will appear on your online menu. Now that you're done with adding and editing your digital menu, you'd want to see how it looks, right? Well, you can do that by clicking on the preview icon located under the right corner. Website. First up, the website. The website shows details of your restaurant to let customers know who you are and what you offer. Here so you can customize it using Menu Tiger. Click Website. Start with the general settings for your site. Click on the photo box to upload a photo for your restaurant's cover image. 
we suggest uploading a high resolution photo of your restaurant to create a good impression and entice potential customers. After that, fill in your restaurant's name, address, contact email, contact number, languages, and currency. Click Save when you're done. Note that the languages you set will then appear as localization options when you translate your digital menu. Here are the sections that you can translate. Store names under the store section, category names, food items, and modifiers under the menu section, hero section, about, most popular foods, why choose us, and promotions under the website section. Now, to the hero section. This is one of the most important parts of your website since it's what invites and hooks your customers in. Under the heading text box, you can fill in a short and catchy heading that introduces what your restaurant can offer. Then you can add more details of what their customer experience will be under the paragraph text box. Take note, the text box allows up to 100 characters only, so make it short and appealing. Make sure to enable this section by clicking on the toggle button to the right, then click Save. If you don't want this section to appear on your website, just click on the toggle button to disable it. The About section is where you can share something beyond the food you're serving by giving the customers a peek behind the curtain or telling your story. Click on the photo box to add a photo. Then, write a heading under the heading text box and further details under the paragraph text box where it has a 500 character limit. Don't forget to enable the section by clicking on the toggle button, then click Save. If you don't want this section to appear on your website, just click on the toggle button to disable it. The most popular food section is where you can showcase your featured dishes. Write down a title of the section under the heading text box and a statement about your featured dishes under the paragraph text box. When you're done, always remember to click on the toggle button to enable the section, then click save to save your edits. If you don't want this section to appear on your website, just click on the toggle button to disable it. Use the Why Choose Us section to increase your chances of drawing in more customers. Display an inviting photo on the section by uploading it on the photo box. Compel your customers to visit your restaurant again with a striking statement on the heading text box and add more engaging words under the paragraph text box. Make sure to enable that section by clicking on the toggle button, then click Save. If you don't want the section to appear on your website, just click on the toggle button to disable it. To reflect your restaurant's theme and ambiance, you can alter the fonts and colors. Click on Fonts, then choose different fonts for your headings, subheadings, and paragraphs. If you have a web developer working on your digital menu, clicking Advanced shows more details on where the fonts will be applied. Once you're done, click Save. On the color section is where you can adjust the color palette of the website and your branded online ordering page. When decorating your website, you can either choose from the suggested colors or customize your own. Make sure to click Save once you're done. If your restaurant has promos, you can also put it up on your website in the Promotions section. Click Promotions, then click Add. Write the name and description of your promo. Then, add an image on the photo box by clicking on it and uploading a photo. After that, you can set the date and time when the promo will start and stop displaying. If your promo has a discount, you can also put it up. Choose if it's an amount or a percentage, then type in the value. You can then select which food the promo will apply to by adding them on applicable foods. Simply type the name of the food that you will add. Of course, this should be on your menu list. After reviewing the information you put in, 
click Create. If you have more promos, just click the Add button to include more. If you want to edit a promo, click on the Edit icon and do your edits, then click Update after you're done. If you want to remove a promo, just click on the Delete icon, then click Yes, Delete. Now that you're done customizing your Digital Menus website, you'd want to see how it looks, right? Well, you can do that by clicking the preview icon on the upper right corner to see the mobile and tablet view. Tools for operation. In order to aid your operations, there are other sections provided for your convenience. These are the add-ons, orders, customers, and report sections. Add-ons. Under add-ons is where you can add integrations to your digital operations. This is where you can accommodate your customers preferred payment methods by giving them different payment options. For now, you can add Stripe and PayPal as checkout payment methods in your online menu. To integrate Stripe, click Integrate, then Setup. You will then be redirected to a page where you will fill in your restaurant's Stripe account. You'll need to fill in the email and password to your Stripe account. Choose your saved information, then click Continue. Review your information, then click Submit. After that, go back to the add-ons page of your Menu Tiger account. Under Stripe, you'll see Successfully Integrated, Chargers Enabled, and Payouts Enabled. You can then click the toggle button to enable Stripe as your payment method. Your customers should now be able to choose Stripe during checkout. Apple Pay and Google Pay are enabled by default with Stripe, so customers may choose to pay with their card or their Apple Pay or Google Pay account. For customers who use PayPal, you can also add it as a payment option. To integrate PayPal, click Integrate and add your PayPal client ID. To get your client ID, go to the link on the screen. Under My Apps and Credentials, click Live, then click Create App. Under App Name, fill in the name of your restaurant, then click Create App. View the details of your app by clicking on the app name, then you'll see the client ID. Copy the client ID, then go back to the Add-on section of your Menu Tiger account. Paste the client ID under PayPal, then click Save. Your customers should now be able to choose PayPal during checkout. The toggle button beside Cash is enabled by default to also have Cash as a payment option. To test your payment integrations, go to your customer website and order some food items. If you see Stripe, PayPal, and Cash in the payment method, your integrations have been successful. Orders. The Orders section is where you'll see the customer orders that come in. This is accessed and commanded by both the admin and the user, but only the admin can sort which store will be displayed. The admin and user you assigned can moderate this section through a tablet assigned to them at the kitchen area for a smoother process from ordering to serving. At first glance, what you'll see on the Orders panel are the Order ID, Payment Method, Date, Time, Table, Status, and Receipt. The Status is where the journey of the customer's order is indicated. The admin or user you assign can set the status of an order into Pending, In Progress, and Completed. The customers will then see their order status in real time as it will be indicated on their online menu page. Clicking on Receipt will show you the details of the customer's orders. It's also where you can print out your customer's receipt. To do this, click the Print icon, then choose the device you're printing on, then click Print. Customers. The Customer section is your own personal customer directory. Under this section, you'll see the details your customers filled in when they visit your customer app website. This is useful in knowing who your patrons are and calculating daily customer count. 
you can view your customer's name, email, and contact number. You can also see their order history by clicking View Orders. If you want to download the overall report, you can do so by clicking Download CSV. The data seen in the Customer section can be used in tailoring your marketing campaigns to your customer's liking based on their frequent orders. This can also be used in promoting your lesser known dishes and have it be featured more. You can also give discounts and coupons to loyal customers on the 50th dish they ordered with you or their 7 day streak of dining at your place. Having the data that lets you know your customers better helps in making creative campaigns to draw in more loyal customers every day. Reports. The report section is where your customer feedback will appear. This is also where you can schedule email alerts for your sales report. The feedbacks tab is where you'll see the date, name, and message that your customer sent. These feedbacks are essential in knowing if the customers like your services or if you need to improve on some things. You can download a file for all the feedback you received by clicking on Download CSV. Now, on to the Scheduler tab. This is where you'll set a schedule for email alerts on your sales report. To schedule an email alert, click Add. Then, write the name of the scheduler, the frequency of the alert, it can be daily, weekly, or monthly, the report type, then the emails where the reports will be sent to. Once you're done, click Create. We're pumped that you're starting your journey with us. Just stay tuned for more practical tips and tricks on how you can grow your business with Menu Tiger.